I don't know who was more nervous, Papa or me. He had the horses hitched to the carriage before dawn. Mama and Sorry had been baking and cooking for, oh, <laughs> what felt like that whole long, hot summer. Papa had invited our entire church, half the Baptists, and even a few of those Mama referred to as less savory types. Not a drunk like McGillis, mind you, but he even extended the courtesy to the Benjamins, Semites though they were. It seemed like the town could talk of nothing else. It didn't hurt that the captain was such a mystery. He had only been to our little town the once to meet me, and with no accommodation to speak of, had spent the night prior in Nashville. He flew through town on the very same horse that carried him to war, and left just as surreptitiously. So it's not a wonder folk had their stories, and were itching something fierce to get a look at a hero of such regard. But I saw him. I saw him through the parlor window. I watched him the whole way from the road to the porch. At first nothing but silhouette and shining buttons. It seemed like he and Papa parlayed for hours before he came to me. Despite all the lecture Mama gave me on how a lady is to conduct herself in such situations, I confess my nerves were in such a state that I could remember little more than to breathe and to smile. I don't remember the details of his uniform. I scarcely remember the color of his hair, but those eyes, those cold black eyes, they inspected me in what must have been the same way he appraised the darkies at the market in Charleston. After an eternity and a day, he addressed me by my name as both a salutation and a dismissal. He turned on his heels, had brief words with Papa, and then he was gone. But I did not watch him go. For Papa and Mama rushed into the parlor to congratulate me. I passed muster, and terms had been set. At dinner, Mama and Papa could talk of nothing else. I know that I should have thanked Providence. I should have been elated to have won the favor of a man of such station, and in the process, secure a comfortable life of privilege. But I could not, for I had seen into those eyes. In those eyes, I saw his heart. Rather, I saw where a man's heart ought to be and found not. Do not think me a naive doe. I had not expectations of love or even the guarantee of a tender touch. Tenderness is not a common trait amongst men who make a name for themselves in war and amass fortunes in the trade of flesh. But when I looked in those eyes, I could find no chance of kindness, nor the hope of love for even our children. I looked, I searched those eyes, and I found no soul. While the rest of the house busied themselves preparing for the upcoming nuptials, I could do little but nurture a growing sense of dread. Even so, what premonition led me to take that knife from the kitchen? No rational thought lived in my conscious mind of that, I am certain, but somehow I knew. I knew because when I looked in his eyes those many days ago and found so much lacking, there was something. There was hunger. And so, while I did not expect the faint tapping at my window that night, neither can I claim surprise. That night he radiated hunger. Hunger so strong he could not wait even one more day. His hunger burned in his eyes, filling my room with a heat even thicker and heavier than the August night. While I could have plunged this knife deep into him as soon as he approached, I waited. I waited until he plunged himself into me. Why did I allow him to do that? Perhaps because I knew that no man ever would again. Why did I not call out? Did I value my reputation more than my life? Why did I simply deposit his corpse underneath my bed? Sorry and her stock would have secreted away the evidence of my deed and never spoken a word of it again, but there he lay that night, and I atop him. And there he lay that morning, as Mama bathed and dressed me in this fine dress. There he lay, as Sorry worked in the kitchen, her boys in the field, and Papa prepared the horses. He lay there, as the church filled with well-wishers and gawkers, and he lay there as they trickled out, making poor attempt to hide their embarrassed confusion. There he lay when we returned home. Through Papa's anger and Mama's tears, there he lay for four whole days until the summer revealed the olfactory evidence of my deed. Sorry found him first. Papa did have some of her boys dispose of the remains. Fed to the pigs, I expect. More to save face than to save me from the noose. The town never did stop talking about the mysterious captain. 
that left his poor bride at the altar. And I never did leave this house again. <laughs>